option activity. And uh, we're setting up a special three at three. Hopefully we'll get that one up tomorrow, but today's we hope is also special. So thank you for joining me. It is the 11th of February, 2021. Disclaimer says that this is for educational and informational purposes only, full stop. Before you act on any of this information, please understand that uh, you need to understand the risks because there are always risks inherent in any investment. So please make sure that you understand these strategies before you just willy nilly throw a call or a put on based on what I'm about to present. Uh, this is educational and informational. As far as our intellectual property rights, yes, we have registered marks, we have trademarks, we have copyrights, and we have patents on almost everything you're about to see. So please, before you just take it, please make sure that you ask us first. And, uh, you know, in all likelihood, we'll probably say, sure, go ahead. I'm just getting a fill here. Um, we'd love it if you'd uh, get out there and spread the word. But uh, please ask us first because, you know, it, it is our intellectual property, as I said. And there, I am Phil. Cool. All right, let's get the party started. How about with this one? Live Nation. So, uh, Live Nation, we talked about it, I think, just a day or so ago. Maybe it was two days ago. Uh, I know we talked about it a week before that, too. But stock at $79. The uh, 6100 uh, February 80 calls kind of caught our eye. And for that reason, we bought, bought, bought stock in Live Nation. There is Live Nation, and there are those 80 calls. You notice those are the February 80 calls. Uh, they closed last night at $2.31, and today they hit $4.26. So, just so you know, I am out of 75% of my trade. Now, for people new to the broadcast, you might be saying, why is he taking off a winning trade like that? Is Doc just being greedy? No, especially in the final six weeks of an options life, I need to be very nimble because I end up having a ton of positions on. So what I do to manage some of that risk is that I get in there and I, on a double, I take off half. These options doubled, I took off half. Then they kept going and I took off another 25% because these options expire next week. So what I'm looking for, folks, is for us to continue in Live Nation. I sure hope it does. This is a reopening play. Uh, but nonetheless, I am going to, with the remaining 25% that I'm long in these 80 calls, I am going to put a put just under the market. Um, it's actually a mental stop. What I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, 25%, uh, not percent, 25 cents under where it is right now, which is $3. At 275, I'm saying, I'm out. But if it keeps going, if this one goes back towards 426, every 50 cents it moves up, I'll move up my stop 25% uh, chasing it up. That's the way I trade them. How about this one? Momo. Bullish call buying with stock at 1723. Again, just days ago. These are options that expire tomorrow, Friday. So you have to be nimble in these. They bought 5,000 uh, for 34 cents. You know we already took off half, just over 68 cents. And here it is today. As Momo moves up from that 723 level all the way up to 1904. You see the day's range there. That's during the market hours. 1904 is what it's moved up to. These calls, again, the right to buy it at 1750, with the stock at 19 is worth at least a dollar fifty. At least a dollar fifty, because of course 1750, 19, that would be a difference of a dollar fifty. Um, and these calls moved up rather nicely. I am now out of my Momo calls. Completely took the profit and ran like a thief in the night because the last batch was up 400%. Gotta take that. CrowdStrike, here's one from, uh, I think this was yesterday. Uh, CrowdStrike, they were buying the 26th of February expiration. That's not next week. That's two weeks from this Friday, from tomorrow because one week from tomorrow is the 19th. The next week is, of course, the 26th. So they were buying the 26th Feb 235 calls. Now, as you know, 
I don't like buying out of the money calls. I like buying at the money calls whenever I can. And in this case, I could. So let me show you what happened. Stock moved up today to 237.28, been as high as almost 240. You see that there, 239, I'm sorry, yeah, 239.89 high of the day. So that where it sat right now uh, was up to uh, 2.5%, right? $5.93 is 2.5%. So if you're a stock trader, you put up 230,000 yesterday, you could get 237,000 for it today, you got a $7,000 profit, tied up all that cash. Now you're about to see why we trade options. Because the option spread that I put on, the 230-235 spread, um, I, for every 230 call that I bought, I sold a 235. So what does that do? Well, it closed last night at $2.10. How do I know that? Look at the closing prices of the 230s and 235s. Close was $10.85 for the 230s, and it was $8.75 for the others. So that means it closed at $2.10. It's trading $3.05 right now, that spread. Because as you see, 1419 minus 1114 difference between those two, $3.05. So it's trading 305. Um, it closed last night at 210. I'm long it from just under two. So I don't have a 100% profit yet, but here's what I do have. I have a 46% gain from last night's close. From last night's close. So you want to trade for two and a half percent gains? Be my guest. If you'd rather be in there with us, trading for nearly 50% overnight, that's why you trade options. Bang! Thank you. By the way, we have a YouTube channel. Regular viewers know this. I would encourage all of you, if you haven't subscribed yet, to please subscribe. What you do is you go to um, youtube.com and in that search bar you type in Market Rebellion. When you do that, you will see that page with those two good looking guys. And then you just click on subscribe. Uh, then you will get all of our broadcasts, whether it's Pete's The Take, My Compound Interests, which is uh, our podcast, whether it's my 60 second video every morning before the market opens, whether it's AJ Monty, you get all of this and it's free. So please go out there and tell all your friends about it because this is a free service that we offer. And of course, many of you that see this will of course want to subscribe to some of our paid products. Great, but if you choose to just remain a free user of our information, that's great too. You decide what's appropriate for you. Tens of thousands of you have come on into uh, Market Rebellion and are trading alongside us, not with us because of course, um, we do not manage money for people. Pete and I don't. We do have a team that does that, but we would be very, it would be difficult for us to talk about stocks on TV as we do if we were managing money for people. So if you'd like, you can go over and subscribe right now. Unusual activity. Let's get to the three at three, starting with Beyond Meat options. And no, uh, I know some of you like this picture so much that you tweeted it out at me and said, doesn't Doc look like Christian Bale? Well, a bald Christian Bale, but Christian Bale from American Psycho. You know, that crazy one where he's got blood all over him and he's like, hey, hey, hey. No, I don't. I am a very calm guy, not that guy. But nonetheless, uh, and I do like him in his Batman role especially. Um, beyond me. We talked about this one on the halftime report. As you see, that's where I cited it, Feb 180 calls. But guess what? Feb 180s, stocks 170-ish. Um, do I buy those? No, I don't buy those. I buy the 170s and sell like the 175s against it. Why do I do that? Because I want to move the odds into my favor. That's what you should always want to do, move the odds into your favor. However, it's a free country. If you choose to trade those 180 calls, have at it, my friends. There's the stock. It moved all the way up to 173.35 after we cited that unusual activity today. Um, keep an eye on this one, um, Beyond Meat, next week options. Not this week. That is not um, the February 12th expiration, which would be tomorrow. These are options that expire next week. 
Second trade of our three at three is Summit Materials. So, several of you asked, Johnny, you're still in your uh, uh, rebuilding and or infrastructure place. Yes, Summit Material is one. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs is another. Freeport is another. Semex, the cement company, that's another. We have several. This is one that we've added to today. Summit Materials was pulling back today, so we got an entry um, below 24. They bought 10,000 of the March 25 calls. Now you could buy that at the money if you chose. They traded for $1.65. There is Summit Materials just moments ago. Um, it was trading at 24. It's been as high as 24.94 today and as low as 23.73. It's a two and a half, uh, sorry, $2.7 billion company in the space. One more pitch, please subscribe. We are so delighted because YouTube opens up a whole bunch of things to us folks for all of you guys that subscribe. So thank you for each and every one of you that has done that. When you subscribe to our YouTube channel, it lets us do big live events and all kinds of other things. It's up over 12,300 now if you have done that, thank you. Please go over to the YouTube channel, type in Market Rebellion into the search bar and subscribe. Last trade of our three at three, a cautious trade. This one is IWM. Somebody decides with the IWM trading at 225 that they want some 220 puts and they wanted them in a hurry. They jumped in and bought a lot of those 220 puts. Or was this 200 puts? Mm, I think it was 220 puts, but it seems like it's a little cheap there at 220. I think it was 200. <sighs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the 200 puts. I might have misprinted that. So I'll tweet it out. After the show, I'll tweet out which one it was. But it was 80 cents that they paid for the puts, and they bought 20,000. That's 2 million share equivalent. So 2 million share equivalent, folks, um, that's 20,000 options times 100, because every option is 400 shares of stock. 2 million share equivalent. That's a pretty big trade somebody's putting on to protect themselves. So watch that. Um, I think I have screwed up this one in more ways than one, but big buyers of puts in IWM is what I should say, because I think when I'm looking at the screen here, it doesn't look right. So I'll tweet this trade, entire trade out um, right after I finish this broadcast, because that's the way I roll. There's the IWM, and as you may have heard, it is the first time in its history that it was trading 40% above the 200 day moving average. I think that's why people are getting ready to, you know, just have some protection in place. First step, well, if you're just getting started in options, go to marketrebellion.com forward slash get started. That is marketrebellion.com forward slash get started. You can see all about unusual activity. You can see all about coaching and, uh, uh, mentoring, you can see on distance learning, all of that good stuff. MarketRebellion.com forward slash get started for more. If you'd like to ask us a question, like why did John screw up that IWM picture? I don't know. I must not have been operating very well with my cut and paste, I guess. But at John Najarian is my handle on Twitter. At three, the word at three again, underscore UOA is another way to get a hold of us. Beyond Meat, yep, that's Alpesh Patel, and yes, I am in his book. So thank you, Alpesh. Um, I wrote, why don't we get Robin Hood Mob to do good and buy Beyond Meat? I'm a shareholder. Watching John Najarian, who was my in my book, Mind of a Trader on CNBC Fast Money. He's going long. Yes, sir, I am. And I appreciate your support, Alpesh. Um, we got to get together. Maybe we got to do a podcast or something soon. Um, very bright guy, folks. And his handle on Twitter is A-L-P-E-S-H-B-P. So thank you, Alpesh. Much appreciated, even though you're, of course, adding to that Christian Bale, American Psycho tweet. <laughs> Disney. All right. D-Rob, whose handle is at D underscore Rob underscore, looks like two underscores at the end there, perhaps. Um, Disney, 175, uh, I'm sorry, 177 
um, calls that expire 3-5, that's March 5th, in the money. Sell prior to close or ride through earnings. Well, since you're nervous about it, uh, D. Rob, I think they're going to report blowout earnings. Um, what I would do if it was me, at least half, I would bang out an at-the-money call against it. That's what I would do, um, even though I anticipate that it's going higher. Because if your gut's telling you that you should take some off the table, listen to your gut. So if you take all of it off, I can't blame you. If you just sell a whole uh, slug of at-the-money options against the whole thing, that's fine. I would do at least 50% based on what your gut is telling you. Thank you very much, D. Rob. When you can. This is from Rishesh Singh, and Rishesh's handle is at A-N-D-R-O-S-F-O-R-M, Andros Form. All right. He says, Spy, John Najarian on CNBC's Halftime Report says he's been taking money off the table when he can, not when he has to. That's a fact. Um, so in many cases, folks, is it because I'm rooting against the market? No. Is it because I am greedy? No. Um, is it because I would like to hold on to as much of my gains as possible? Yes, that is the reason. And so I have been liquidating many of my stock positions because when I own a stock, I've got the entire downside. Now we all know most stocks aren't going to zero, especially the ones in my portfolio, which I really like, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. I'm not really worried about those going to zero, but I am worried about what happens if stocks correct um, after this amazing run. Well, one way that I can address that, folks, is to get in here and sell out my stock for the non-taxable accounts. I sell out my stock and I get into call spreads as a way to be in the market between point A and point B without as much downside risk. I like that trade a lot better, so that's what I've been doing. You sell when you can, not when you have to. And Voyager, yeah, I love Voyager. Um, you can earn interest on Voyager Bitcoin 5.5%. So if you own Bitcoin, and this thing's been screaming to the upside, on Voyager, which as you know, I have fully disclosed on CNBC as well as to you many times here that I am a significant shareholder in Voyager. So is my brother Pete. Um, we are believers in what they do. They have 50 plus digital assets on the platform, no commission trading, and they're one of the best operated companies in the space. So uh, they trade on, in Canada under the symbol VYGR.CN. It's on the Toronto Venture Exchange. They are going to try to uplist to the U.S. exchange. Right now they're over the counter under the symbol VYGVF. That's Victor Yahoo Golf Victor Frank. That's their symbol. Yeah, I know. It's a five-letter symbol that ends in F. That's because it's an over-the-counter trader. Bang! I appreciate all of you joining me here today, folks. I hope wherever you are, you're having a good day. And I hope you had some Teradata when we talked about that one. Tell a friend about the podcast. Tell a friend about 3 at 3. Please go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. It's free. Thank you for joining me today. I hope it's a great one for you. It's been a great trading day for me.